Spoofing. It's when somebody sends an email that looks like it came from someone else. Now it used to be just spammers, but now it's mostly criminals. Sometimes they use lookalike domains, but a lot of times they actually use your domain name and your email address. Why are crooks spoofing email addresses? They're trying to steal money, of course. According to the FBI IEEE website, email-based cybercrime, which they call business email compromise, or BEC, is still on the rise. How much on the rise, you ask? Well, here's a pop quiz. One of these next two statements is an actual PSA from the FBI. Here's the first PSA. Business email compromise, the $12 billion scam. Here's the second one. Business email compromise, the $26 billion scam. It's actually a trick question. They're both FBI PSAs, but do you know the difference between them? Just one year. The FBI started keeping track of statistics like this in 2013, and since then, it took about five years for us to get to the $12 billion mark worldwide. Then, it only took about one more year to get to the $26 billion amount. I'm going to give you a second to think about that and let it sink in because that's crazy. And it's all done via email. If you deal with corporate finance or personnel, then chances are you know exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, you're probably saying to yourself, yeah, we get a, at least three or four of those a month or a week, and our employees usually spot them, but we sure are worried that one of them is going to get through. And you should be worried. Now, if your users are telling you about these emails, then you're either evaluating an end user security training program or you've already implemented one. And that's good. The sooner, the better. And it's not just better for your company, it's better for your employees too because these scams are hitting them personally as well. Email-based mortgage fraud, for example, is rampant right now and is only getting worse. So end user security training is critical and it will help you catch scams. But there's an obvious problem with it. You're asking your users to guess as to whether an email is legitimate or spoofed, and sooner or later, they're going to guess wrong. So that's not good enough. Well, what else can you do? Well, you can implement an anti-spoofing email solution. There's plenty of them out there. Microsoft Office 365 has their advanced threat protection. There's third-party email security solutions like Mindcast and Force point. These systems use a complex algorithms, uh, heuristics, language, machine learning to make decisions as to whether an email is likely to be spoofed or not. And they're super smart. But there's an equally obvious problem with them. They're also just making a guess. It's a super smart guess, yes, but it's still just a guess. And sooner or later, they are also going to guess wrong. All email admins know what the problem is and they all know what the solution should look like. The solution is for the SMTP servers on the internet to reject mail that says it came from you when it actually didn't come from you. So if an email came from a domain called example.com, if I send an email from example.com, the recipients of that email need a method to check that it actually came from me and not from some fraudster. If we had a way to do that, then we'd get rid of almost all the spoofing right now. Is there such a method or system that can do that? Amazingly enough, there is. And just as amazing, almost nobody is using it. A recent survey of over 25,000 businesses spread out over sectors like Fortune 100, manufacturing, whatever, discovered that 90% of businesses are not protecting their outbound email from spoofing using the methods I'm about to describe. So, I know you're probably asking, what is this magical system and why are so few organizations using it? Well, what I'm talking about is commonly known as email authentication, and it's currently implemented with three separate internet protocols. Now, nobody owns these protocols, and every email system will allow you to implement all three of them for free. If you don't know what a protocol is, by the way, it's just a program defined on the internet, like the SMTP protocol that sends email all over the internet. Now, these three protocols that work together to provide email authentication are called SPF, 
DKIM and DMARC. So SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. So why are so few companies implementing this email authentication solution? Well, the difficulty is that these protocols are not very well understood and you're required to not just set them up correctly individually, but also set them up to work together and it's just not that easy. Unfortunately, it's all too easy to screw it up. In fact, it's a fair bet that fear of the unknown is a major factor in the slow adoption of these email authentication protocols. IT and email administrators are hesitant, and rightfully so, about making any change that could adversely affect email delivery. In this instance, it's actually a healthy fear. Let me give you an example of why. All three of these authentication methods use DNS records as part of their setup. These are DNS text records that hold some of the configuration for these protocols. In one of these protocols, if you accidentally type a plus instead of a minus, you could be authorizing the entire internet to send spoofed emails from your domain. Worse yet, those emails would result in a passing grade for email authentication checks and any email service that's configured for anti-spoofing would probably see those messages as golden and let them right through without checking them further. But wait, there's an even worser part. <laughs> yeah, I know I said worse already and worser is not really a, a word, but really there is a worse part. The crooks can actually look at your DNS and see if you've made that mistake. In fact, a quick DNS lookup will tell them whether you're implementing any of these things in the first place. They can see it. The information is right there in DNS. Anyone can look. The barbarians are literally standing at your gate and looking at its weaknesses. And if you haven't set up these three protocols to provide email authentication, then your gate is made up of balsa wood and chewing gum. But there's good news. With the right help and knowledge, it's possible to set up SPF DKIM and DMARC correctly and safely. Once they're in place, you're gonna trade in that balsa wood gate for a titanium one. Crooks will take one look at your configuration and move right on down the road to the next business. Now put user education and advanced email threat detection on top of that and you'll have turned your email system into a fortress.